Good morning and welcome to the United Methodist Church of the Dunes, Grand Haven, Michigan. I am the senior pastor, Lou Grettenberger. I'll be your preacher and worship guide for today. We hope you find our service a blessing. And if you have not found a church home, uh, we hope that you might find home with us. This time I will turn you over to our communications director, Carla, for some more information about our ministry and how to connect with us online. Hi. Just over a week ago, the August Dunes Digest newsletter was published. It was emailed to most and sent by mail to those who have let the church know they don't have internet access. On the front page of that newsletter is an article by Pastor Lou. In that article, he tells us more about the recent annual conference held by the Michigan Conference of the United Methodist Church. There's also an update on the hard work being done by the Task Force on Reopening. It's exciting to announce that the church has a new Facebook page. The original Facebook page experienced technical difficulties and no longer works. That original page was called United Methodist Church of the Dunes. Since we're not able to reuse a page name, the new page is called Church of the Dunes and can be accessed when logged in to Facebook. Today's bulletin includes the order of the worship service and additional announcements. It's available on the church website. Thank you so much for being here. Let's join Pastor Lou. We join with me now in our call to worship as we read it responsively. O oh God, you come to us not in the chaos of the whirlwind, not in the roar of the earthquake, not in the crackling heat of the fire, but in the sound of sheer silence. Quiet our minds. Bring peace to our hearts and stillness to our bodies, that we might meet you in that stillness. Help us to listen for your still, small voice. Give us the courage to go wherever you lead us, trusting that you will prepare the way. We pray this in the name of our companion on the journey, Jesus the Christ. Let's worship God together. We join me now in our hymn, My Hope is Built.
to share a few words with the boys and girls who are with us today for worship. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Lou, and I'm so happy that you're here this morning. Today, we have an amazing story about 12 disciples who were out in a boat. And all of a sudden, this big storm came, and the boat was shaking back and forth. And they thought that they would fall out, or, or maybe they would die. And pretty soon they looked out in the distance and they saw somebody walking across the water. Now that's pretty unusual. And they thought, oh my goodness, this must be a ghost. But when that person came closer and began to speak, and the person said, it's okay, don't be afraid. Suddenly they realized it wasn't just any ghost, it was Jesus. Jesus had come to them when they shouted out in fear. Well, the next step was that Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, said, Lord, if it's you, ask me to come out on the water. And Jesus said, come. And so Peter got out on the water and started to walk. And as long as he looked at Jesus, he was fine. But then it says he looked down and he got afraid again and he started to sink. And when he started to sink, he said, Jesus, save me. And Jesus reached down, it says in the scripture, and saved him. This story reminds us that no matter what happens in our life, no matter how hard it gets, and when we can't make it on our own, if we will say, Jesus, help us, Jesus, save us, that Jesus is always there if we cry out in faith to him. We pray with me, please? Dear God, remind us that no matter what the storms of life bring, that you are always with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Let us read it together. God, we come seeking you in mighty earthquakes. We come listening for you in resounding thunder. We come expecting you in sweeping victories. Yet you are found in a baby's touch, in the silence, or in the least of these. Save us, O oh God, from our aimless wandering. Save us, O oh God, from our idols. Save us, O oh God, from our self-induced chaos. Forgive us, O oh God, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Please hear these words of assurance. No matter what the storms of your life, no matter what your struggles, in the midst of it all, God is still present with you. Know this blessing by listening deep in your heart for that still, small voice. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to join us in a time of offering. Remember that you can give online. Uh, by going to our website, or you can send us your gifts in the mail at 717 Sheldon Road, Grand Haven, Michigan, 49417. Thank you in advance for your giving to our church. Amen. At this time, we'll take a few moments to bless our offering as we read our prayer of dedication together. Forgiving God, the first offering you ask for is the giving of ourselves, loving you and others boldly, refusing to let our fears of the storms around us keep us from taking risks. Forgive us for times when you have called us to leave our places of comfort and we've ignored the call. Forgive us when our giving has not grown beyond our safety zone, but you blessed our gifts and us anyway. For those times when we dared to put our foot outside the boat and then sank up to our knees, thank you for not taking your hand away. For all this, we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear a word now from our gospel. Our first reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, beginning at the 22nd verse of the 14th chapter of Matthew. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. 
But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came white, walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You call me out upon the waters, the great find you in the mystery all oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul abounds in deepest waters oh you shower reading from Hebrew scriptures today comes from 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 9 through 18. Listen for this scripture. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, 
He wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aram. Also you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, and Abel Mehola as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Heziel, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. May God bless this reading of Holy Scriptures. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, bless us as we study your scriptures, as we remember the promises and truths that are found there. Help us to mine the field of scripture so that we might find the nuggets of truth there and that they might be applied to our lives. In Jesus' name. Well, my father-in-law showed me his recent electric bill. Through the summer months, his bills have been at or below zero dollars. And he wanted to show me that's with running the air conditioner and some months uh, he was even putting money away from his electric bill for next winter. But how does he do it, you might ask? Well, the simple answer is he recently installed solar panels. And so he and my mother-in-law are banking power for the winter months during the sunny days of summer so that in the cold of winter, there will be plenty of resource for the energy needed. As you know, Northern Michigan can be pretty gray and energy demanding. Similarly, my daughters last week came to me and they needed power as well. They called, uh, they asked me if I would buy them some power banks when I was young, I ordered piggy banks, but I guess now today we order power banks. Anyway, when they came, one of the daughters charged her bank and then used her phone for hours, she told me, with no use almost at all on her power bank, like 5%, and no use at all of the battery on her phone. No decrease in power whatsoever. What a wonderful device. As we enter our story today, we find Jesus ready to get repowered. He's just finished an endeavor that was requiring much energy. He fed 5,000 men and their families. He healed people. He prayed. So he sends his disciples on his way to the next evangelistic site. And then he dismisses the thousands and the crowds that he has just fed. Imagine how exhausted he must have been after all of that work. It was getting to a critical point, I'm sure. And so he was needing to repower our, his batteries, just as in certain times we need to repower our batteries to recharge. Jesus, we are told, went up to the mountains to pray. He went up to find his center to recharge himself so he'd be ready for the next the next mission, the next help that he was to offer. About three years ago, almost to the day, I pronounced my son-in-law Mark and my daughter Emma, husband and wife. It was a great day. One of the greatest parts was having the opportunity to share with him and with her some ideas about marriage. I was asked to bless the marriage and, and then say some things. I, I did bless their marriage, and I didn't say, oh, life is going to be easy. <laughs> Far from that. Instead, I reminded them that life would undoubtedly be challenging. At the point that I did that, I had no idea exactly how challenging it was going to be, either for them or for the world. 
Of course, all the things we are going through right now here in the state of Michigan, they also are going through with the pandemic and the struggles around race. In their personal journeys, they moved from New York City to Greeley, Colorado. So Mark could pursue his PhD and Emma gave up at least temporarily her work at the Young People's Course of New York City. During that three year period, she bore their first child and went to work in a distillery because the money was better working there than it was working in the field that she had been schooled uh, to work in. It helped make ends meet. What I told them on their wedding day was certainly that life wouldn't be easy. But I also told them that navigating life together would be better. How important those words are for Mark and Emma and also for us. We are navigating this tough course in our history as a nation and a world. I thank God that we're not navigating alone, that we're sharing life. We're sharing life with a God who walks with us. We're sharing life with family. We're sharing life with a community of faith, be it distant at times, whom we have always shared life and faith and activity and mission. Jesus may have been alone when he went up to the mountain that day, but he wasn't lonely because he was not truly alone. He had God with him. On that mountain, he was restored by the presence of God and reminded that he was not really alone. Jesus' disciples, on the other hand, had not had this chance to recharge their battery. They were sent on their way. They hopped in a boat and headed off to the next mission. They were sent out without recharging to the next place. But before they got there, before they got any rest, a storm came up and they were frantic as the winds hit their boat. And in the midst of the storm, they couldn't find true north. They lost their center. Gratefully, what they did find, or maybe I should say who found them, was Jesus. Jesus came to them in the midst of their struggles, trials, and disorientation. God is not just found on the high mountain. God in Jesus Christ is found in our day-to-day -day existence. Frozen with fear, they cried out to Jesus, take heart, help us. And Jesus said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. They thought at first it was a ghost. They thought it was something else to be afraid of, but instead, their salvation had come. We can't help but remember that in the early parts of the Gospel of Matthew and Luke, in the birth narratives we call them, the stories of Jesus' early life, we find angels singing. You remember their words, do not be afraid. This is not a new message in the Gospels. It's a message that runs through the course of Jesus' life, ministry, and beyond. Hear these words today for you. In the eye of the storm, there is peace with God. There is a silent center, even in the midst of chaos, in the loudness of the world, there is a still small voice within us, and that voice is Jesus's voice. The first tentative steps of the Christian church were taken on the wobbly knees of Peter that day. It's right there in the story. Peter says, command me, Jesus, to come to you on the water. He wants to take steps for God. Peter understands that the authoritative command of Jesus brings with it the power to do what God commands us. It's almost as if he's saying, make me, Jesus. Make me trust you. Help me trust you. The first steps of Peter were bold, as though he was stepping out on the water on his own strength that he could do anything. He was Superman. But as soon as he looked down at his legs and realized there was nobody holding his hand, that he was alone, his legs began to sink into the surf. He began to lose it. But his salvation in the story comes from Jesus. When he sees his feet go beneath the water, he pleads with Jesus Jesus, save me. 
And Jesus takes his word as an intention, as weak as it was, that Peter wanted to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus. Hear those words. As weak as Peter was, Jesus receives his attempts as enough. All Peter had to say was, Lord, save me. We find in the story that it wasn't Peter's amazing ability to walk on water that saved him that day. It was his ability to depend completely and fully on Jesus. Soren Kierkegaard, famous philosopher, would say, Peter moved with fear and trembling. Now, understand that Kierkegaard did not originate these words. He took them from scriptures, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. That we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But, but of course, the writer of the book of Philippians, that wasn't really original either. either. He wrote by drawing on the words of Psalm 55, verse 5. Each of these passages points to the fact that we live life, if we're to be faithful, with fear and trembling. Not by knowing everything, not by saying, I know and do everything right, but by humbly trusting. Kierkegaard says, infinite resignation is the last stage before faith. We might say, give it up for Jesus, right? In fact, Jesus, when he was on the cross, lives that kind of submitted life. Using these words, Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. A movement to the center of God's will requires a healthy dose of humility and submission. In our Hebrew story, or Old Testament story today, Elijah is coming off a tremendous victory. With God's help, he has singularly defeated some 450 Baal prophets. He's exhausted. He's spent spiritually. And now Jezebel and King Ahab, Jezebel's the king's wife, are after him. They want his head. Elijah's running for his life and ends up under a broom tree out in the wilderness, spent. There he is nourished and strengthened. Then he goes in a cave nearby and, and I'm assuming falls asleep and he has a vision. And in that vision, he's told to go stand on the mountain before the Lord God. When he gets up to the mountain, the tremendous winds come and batter the mountain at him. The scriptures tell us, but God was not in the wind. Then the earth quaked. God has, God was not in the earthquake. Then everything around him caught fire, but God was not in the fire. And after all of that came a still, small voice. The loud chaos of the world did not offer a solution, and it certainly did not offer peace. It is God's voice, God's word, God's spirit that gives us and grants us peace. In the midst of the chaos of the world and everything that's going on, all of us, I think, are seeking and trying to find some sense of order, but we don't defeat chaos by saying, I can fix everything. We do that by learning how to live at peace in the midst of chaos, despite what's going on around us, to find that silent center that is God's voice within us. Have you met Caesar? Well, you're about to meet Caesar. Caesar and I have a common heritage. Both Caesar and Pastor Lou were born in Argentina. I now live in Michigan and Caesar the Lama now lives in Portland, Oregon, or at least has been spending much time there recently. Caesar has been going to the demonstrations in Portland. His handler or owner brings him to try to bring a sense of calm in the midst of the chaos going on there. 
And llamas are kind of funny. Just looking at him makes you laugh and want to engage. Just look at him, how soft and cuddly he is. And apparently, though not all llamas are known for their friendly disposition, Caesar has a very kind and nice disposition as well. In the midst of the stress and the strain between law enforcement and protesters, Caesar just shows up. Caesar's presence is disarming to everyone. Police, as you can see, have even been affected. The presence of what some are calling the no drama llama has also helped the people who were protesting keep their cool and find a sense of peace in the midst of a lot of stuff going on. I want to invite you today to sit with that image of the no drama llama. I want you to try to figure out how can I be that no drama llama, infusing in every situation, tense or otherwise, in every conversation, a sense of calm that proceeds from humility. I don't have all the answers, but I'm willing to listen and converse and try to change things. I think being the no drama llama can change the course of the conversation, the way that we communicate with each other, that the earth might be a better place if we found our silent center, if we listened for the still small voice and then became that silent center and still small voice in hard conversations. Let's make the passing of the peace more than just a Sunday morning ritual, but instead a daily discipline. I invite you today as you hear this message to go be no drama llamas for Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that your voice still speaks. But forgive us, Lord, for so often we are not attentive to your voice, your will, or your way. We are anxious. We run from you. We are not certain of our steps, frustrated by our gut responses. Lord, there's so much going on in the world today, and we need your help to help us find a silent place, a center, a place of peace. Lord God, help us to breathe out and breathe in, breathe out what it is that pollutes us with fear and anxiety and breathe in the peace that only you can bring. We pray today, God, for a fractured world, for an agitated world, that we might move and be in this world in a way that causes it to have to reform itself to your will and your way, which is the way of love. Lord God, we feel some days that we're like Elijah in a cave, in a dark place, unable to see you. But we know that by your grace, you show your face to us. We pray now that you will guide our church, guide us personally and in our family and work life, guide our nation and our world. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are struggling. We pray for those who are dying. We pray for those who have lost people to death and illness. Breathe on us, breath of God, so that we might be fully yours. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, the same Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join us in our final hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. You'll see the words on the screen.
Thank you so much for attending our online worship experience. We hope you'll check out our website and our Facebook page to find out about all the ministry and mission that we're involved in as a local congregation and ways that we might touch your life if you choose to become a part of us. We hope you will. Go in the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go listening for the voice that sometimes is so quiet it's hard to hear in the rush of this life. Take time away to listen for God's voice and take every opportunity you have to share God's grace. In Jesus' name we pray.